everybody. Welcome back to Beginner's Mind, Art Mind. I'm Linda, and after I had mentioned that um, I hadn't been feeling well, I was having a little bit of a relapse with my chronic health issues, and I talked about my art nest. So many of you reached out and said that you were interested in learning more about my art nest. So this video is made up of a couple of different things. This video, the first part of this video I made back in March when I wasn't feeling well and I had just started to talk about uh, my current relapse, I think in my videos, and I had set up on my dining room table and I was doing, doing some mixed media work down there. So that's the first part of the video. And then towards the end, I was, there was one evening where I was sitting in my recliner and I had my art nest set up. So I just grabbed my camera because I thought, wow, I, here I am, I'm not feeling well, I'm in my art nest, let me shoot some footage and show everybody what this looks like from my perspective when I'm in my art nest. So I thought today I would actually bring my bag that sits next to my recliner up to my studio and show you guys a little bit of what I actually have in the bag. I did that a little bit the night I was sitting in my recliner in my art nest, but I thought I would give you a closer look. What I have in this bag often changes from time to time depending on what I you know, decide to put in and take out and how much energy I actually have to create. I do actually take this out with me sometimes when I create um, I, in the car, you know, or on location or plein air. I have a Peshad box that I use more often, but um, I sometimes like to have this in the car. So let me just show you a little bit about this bag. Oh, and I will put links below the video for as many of these items as I can find that are still available online. Um, I just recently started my affiliate account, so I make a very small commission on items. When you click the link, it helps support my videos. You guys do not pay any extra for those items. You're just supporting my content and helping me keep my videos free versus doing a Patreon type thing. So thank you so much for those of you that are clicking my links. Um, all right. So the bag. I love this bag. I hope it's still available. I hope I can put a link to it because this has been wonderful. I've tried so many different bags and backpacks, but I love this bag. It has loops all the way around that are all different sizes. I don't know if you can see, you can put brushes, pens. I have a mechanical pen in this one. All different size loops that you can stick things in and pockets. So this is um, some Daniel Smith watercolors. This is M. Graham watercolors. And actually I usually have my gouache palette in there. I should try to find that. I'd like to show you that palette. Um, so is that it in those two pockets? These are some big clamps for if I need to clamp a sketchbook onto my Peshad box. And these pockets have a spray bottle with water in it. Some funky old brushes for interesting mark making. A couple of rolls of tape for taping off um, sketchbook pages. Mechanical pencil. This pocket has some uh, rags, another funky brush, uh, an eraser pen, some uh, M. Graham titanium white gouache. So that's what's in my pockets. I have two smaller clips that I use to clip back my pages when I'm working. This is the page that you'll see that I did at the end of the video. My uh, husband with the dogs in his lap. And I just use these clips to keep the pages back. This is one that I did last night with some luminance pencils and Tombow pens. I think that's it. I think that's all I used on there was luminance pencils and Tombow pens, which I love, love, love the luminance pencils. I know I did that whole video on buyer's remorse for buying them. I didn't need to be spending the money, but I love them. I love them with the, oh, that's the other thing I used on that was the Ecoline. 
But let me pull these out. These, I'll try to find a link to something like these, um, but I bought these at a dollar store. So I don't know if I'll be able to find anything like this online to link to. But I love these. They're made for spices in your cabinet, apparently, but they stack together. So I have my Tombos in here, and these are all blues and violets. These are all my greens. And these are browns, yellows, and reds. And it works great when I'm sitting You'll see my little lap desk that I have at the end of the video. And when I'm sitting in that, I can set this out. And I have this big bag in here. And inside this, I have a pencil sharpener and my luminance pencils divided by color. So that's these bags all divide it up by color, which makes it so easy. And what I actually do when I'm sitting in my art nest is to keep things neat and accessible because, you know, you figure if you're, if you're sitting in there, well, at least with me, you don't have to not feel well to make an art nest. They're wonderful. Especially like me, my husband likes to watch TV at night and I don't, I don't really enjoy TV anymore. I just, I don't know. I don't think there's that, the programming's that great anymore. And um, so I will zip this down so that it's like that and the pencils are sticking out and I can just sort of grab the pencils out of it. But, whoa. Okay, but these are the Caran d'Ache Luminance pencils. Love, 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 love these. So that's the pale tones, pastel tones, blues, greens, and oranges, reds, and browns in that one. And then I have Posca pens in two different sizes, Neo Color crayons, and this little one, uh, a grayscale set of grayscale uh, Faber Castell pens, and just some mis miscellaneous stuff: eraser, elastic band, a couple of different erasers in there. And these bags are reinforced; they come in all different sizes. I purchased them in a set. I think I actually linked these on my last video and I'll link them on this video. I love these bags. They're so light, really sturdy. I actually found out about these bags from, um, or this type of bag. She uses a different brand, but I found out about this type of bag from Emma Carlisle and I love them. So another thing that is in my art nest is my Eco Line water what do they actually call these eco line brush pen they're a watercolor brush pen and i love these too they're not color fast but for using in the sketchbook or for designers that make prints they're really fun to work with it's really fun i love to lay down a wash of those first and then build on top of that with my tombos and my um, luminance pens. I found out about those through Emma Carlisle's Patreon too. Let's see. And then I have in the very bottom tissues. Um, I have a mask for when I go out, out with this bag. Some more uh, washable cloths because I'm trying not to use so many paper towels anymore. I'm trying to use washable things. I have a water container that's sealable and leak proof. And I'll Try to put a link to this too. It has this little thing on the bottom that you can sort of rub your brushes against to wash them. And when I take this with my Peshad box, what I do is I just clip it to the front of my Peshad box. All right. Let's see. I'll start to load some of this stuff back in. And then I have. So I have my um, Caran d'Ache oil pastels in here, so I can work with those. I have this sketchbook, which has some, um, this one I actually did in plein air. With, I brought out this bag with these things. 
These were some drawings I did from Emma Carlisle's Patreon. They're timed drawings. I think I did a video on that. Yeah, her timed drawing sessions on her Patreon are really fun. So there's that sketchbook. And then I usually bring this sketchbook, which is almost full. I'll be doing a flip through on this one really soon. So I bring that one. And then this goes in here. Okay, tissues. And then the last thing I have, I'm just noticing, you know, my camera looks really crooked. I hope I haven't just made this whole part of this video crooked for you guys. It looks really crooked. I think it might have tipped while I was talking, so I apologize if it is crooked. But I'm just going to keep going because I'm tired. This one has, I love this. This is um, Angu, A-N-G-O-O. And this has pockets for everything you can imagine. There's a mesh pocket, zipper pocket here. There's a mesh pocket and little elastics to hold things here. I have all kinds of pens, pen erasers, charcoal pencils, um, gel pens, water soluble graphite. I mean, I go over some of this later in the video and brush pens. Uh, mechanical pencils, a rubber, I always forget what these are called, uh, smudger stick, um, sponge, white charcoal, regular portable watercolor brushes, gum eraser and a regular eraser, pencil sharpener. This is a black wing dual t pencil sharpener, so the First one sharpens the pencil, and then the second one extends the tip if you want a long tip on it. And I also can fit my watercolor or gouache palette in here. There's enough room to zip it with that in there. So if I just want to take this, I have all the sketching tools I need. I have the watercolor, water brushes, and all the pencils and stuff. I have a... a red value scale finder in there so this is such a great item i really love this there's all kinds of different versions on it if you don't pack it as full as i have it if you leave the bottom part unpacked you can zip this other zipper and it'll smush it down so that it's even smaller all right so that is what i have in my art nest bag at a close-up look there's really great strong handles, and I, I love this. I love this bag. Like I said, I've tried so many different bags, and I haven't found any of them to work as well as this bag works for me. I have it sitting on a little table next to my recliner, and when I don't feel good, I can just reach in for whatever I want, put it on the little table tray, which you'll see later in the video, and it works really nice. Oh, almost forgot to put this back in. Take it apart and it's hard to remember how you had it put together. Okay, so if you're only interested in seeing the setup art nest, then skip ahead to about halfway through the video and you'll see that set up. The next part of the video is going to be the first day when I started to not feel good and I brought all my gear down and spread it out on the dining room table. And I did... Um, I show you a few paintings that I had been doing in the sketchbook and then I actually do a really loose mixed media um, painting in the sketchbook for that part. And then the second part where I show the art nest, I show the drawing that I had just done of my husband, but I don't think I actually show the process of me drawing it. So I really hope you enjoy this video. Um, I would love to give you guys some tips on like, you know, 10 tips for creating when you don't feel well. I have a feeling that should probably be another video. Um, but you know, the thing is, if you create an art nest and you're creating while you don't feel well, you really do have to let go of 
wanting to create pretty art. That was one of the hardest things for me. I would get so frustrated because I had this really heavy chronic fatigue and pain and I would try to make good artwork in my art nest. Now I just, like this piece I just showed you. Um, what did I do with that sketchbook? This one that I did last night. This was so much fun to do. And it's so loose. I just started out with the water brush pens and then I added uh, some Tombow markers as the next layer. And then I added the Luminance Caran d'Ache colored pencils, which work beautifully over both the Tombow and the water brush, the watercolor pens. And um, it, it was just fun. It was relaxed. It was fun. I had actually done a scene, a tighter scene of a barn that morning with gouache and this was just a really fun relaxed really loose version of that and I actually like this one a lot the way it came out another idea is to do um, contour drawings which are really a lot of fun you know you can have a designated sketchbook which this what this is sort of my designated sketch I guess there's a lot of different stuff in here but this is the one that I always keep in my art nest. So you don't have to show that sketchbook to anybody. That can be your private place where you just do some creative act at in the evening or whenever you don't feel well during the day. Um, so contour drawing is really fun. Blind contour drawing where you see something in the room and you just look at the thing and you just move your pen in a continuous line and you don't um, lift your pen and you don't look down at your paper and you get some crazy results. That actually is really fun to do and then add some color to it. So with the markers, just to be really Picasso-esque. Um, the other thing is that I showed you on one of my other sketchbooks. I just recently did this sketchbook tour and I showed you some torn paper exercises that are super fun to do when you don't feel well. If I can find them to show you. Oh, okay, here. So you just you can just paint a background or you can start without the painted background and you just take a magazine and tear out shapes of paper. But these are all different pieces of paper where they were just torn out and then I had a, a little container where I had all these scraps of paper and then you grab your scraps and you piece them together like the ears might be separate pieces the face was a separate piece the body was a separate piece the grass was two different pieces and then just take um gouache or acrylics or markers I mean this is mixed media there's all kinds of stuff in here and just embellish it into little creatures and that is so relaxing and so much fun because even if in one evening you only get the background painted or you only get the um, papers ripped, the magazine pages ripped, or you only get them attached with a matte medium or a gel, you know, Golden's gel or even Elmer's glue you could use, just get them attached to the pages. Then the next night, maybe you embellish them with marker. You know, it's a really easy thing to pick up and put down. Here's some more of those creatures. And they're kind of fun. Just tear, torn up paper and then just layering on other things. And like, who knows what these prehistoric birds are, you know? I think this one's very touching. This person reaching out and touching that one's back and that one because of an ink, there's ink in this one. I had dripped ink on it. That one looks like it's crying and this one's comforting it. I mean, you just really never know what's going to come out of these torn paper pages. And another exercise, I mean, sometimes it looks like that. It just looks like putting stuff on paper and that's it. That's what comes out. It's the, it's the creative process. It's not the result, especially when you're not feeling well, that's healing. It's the act of creative expression. I know I say this all the time, but it truly is the act of creative expression that is healing and that calms your nervous system down and eases inflammation and anxiety and depression. It really truly doesn't matter 
what it looks like in the end, that's in our heads. And that's something that we can overcome with work, working on our thoughts. As far as healing your body, just put stuff on paper and make marks and paint and glue things to paper. And you don't have to show it to anybody. So this is all stuff that can be done. This one, for example, was a stencil. I painted a background and then I, I painted over it with yellow with a stencil. And then I filled in each little stencil piece with words. So there's like health, faith, hopeful, joy, journey, calm, peace, comfort, create, love, blessings, wellness. That's the thing. In writing with your left hand, writing notes to yourself with your left hand and then sort of embellishing. This actually is a scrap of palette paper. I save all my old palette paper and glue them to pages as a start for collage. There's one other exercise in here. I mean, this is just gluing down old pieces of palette paper and then doing a, a stamp, a rubber stamp over it with ink. There's one more thing I'd like to find. I mean, this is just a, a, a gel printed phone book page. A lot of these were done when I was a lot sicker than I am now. And I really, that's all I could do. That's all I could get on paper. This journal is very special to me. I think I talked about that in the um, vid, the flip through tour that I did of this. This is another one where I just ripped up an old recipe, handwritten recipe from an old recipe book I found at a tag sale and then just embellished around it. This is another ripped up paper one where I created a scene where I just ripped up paper. This is just putting ink on one page and then smushing it together. This is another really nice exercise. So you just write automatic writing across the whole page. You don't give any thought to what you're writing. You just write across the whole page, fill the entire page with writing. It's kind of like a Julian, Julia Cameron exercise from the artist's way. Just, um, I'm not sure she calls it auto, I think she calls it morning pages, but you just write across the whole page, stream of consciousness, some people call it, writing. And then you go back over, you take, I, I guess I took a stencil or some kind of round object and I made these circles, or you could just freehand, maybe I did freehand it. Yeah, they're pretty wonky, I probably freehanded it. And then you um, leave the text showing it looks like I probably did a very light watercolor wash across the whole page and then wrote over that with a ballpoint pen and then drew these circles around segments of the writing. And you're not choosing what writing you save. It's just all very automatic. You just make circles around the page and then paint with acrylics or gouache or whatever, whatever. You could even just use markers, but I it feels like I used gouache, um, maybe, maybe a flat acrylic, but paint all around these circles and then just doodle around that. And that t that takes up a good amount of time and that's something you can drop and then come back to. It, that's really calming to do. So uh, it doesn't take any thought. It's a, it's a fun exercise. So since I just did a full flip through on this, I think, was it last week or the week before? I don't know, I'm losing track of my videos. Um, I'm not gonna go through any more of these, but that gives you an idea of different things that you can do in the, you know, when you're not feeling well and sitting in your art nest. Um, I really hope you give it a try if you're struggling with chronic illness, chronic pain, chronic fatigue, grief. Oh my gosh, so good for grief. Um, any Anything that's just keeping you stuck and not able to get up and get out and do what you would like to do, art nest. Um, try building an art nest, grab yourself a bag, it does not have to be anything fancy, fill it up with some art gear, grab an art journal, and just create without thought or specific intention of making a beautiful painting or beautiful results. Like I said, that was the hardest part for me to overcome. I would get frustrated because I would wanna make a pretty painting and that didn't feel healing at all to me. That felt very frustrating and anxiety provoking. Now that I can sit down and just put anything down on the paper that I, I don't even care. I just let it flow. It's very intuitive. It's become very a very healing practice for me when I'm having a relapse. 
Okay, I have taken much longer on this beginning description than I meant to, so I'm going to leave that there, and the next part of the video will be the paintings that I did down at the dining room table, and then after that, we'll, the last segment will show the actual art nest set up with me creating it. So hope you guys enjoy the video. I hope some of this information is helpful. You know, let me know in the comments if there was a specific part of this that spoke to you or if you've tried it. If you do try setting up an art nest, I would absolutely love it if you tagged me on Instagram. My Instagram link is in the description below the video. So click on over to my Instagram account and let me see your art nests. Let me see your art nests and if you feel comfortable sharing what you're creating in your art nests. Um, it would be really fun to see how people are putting different things together and, and sitting with them and creating. It would also be inspiring. We could inspire each other by saying, hey, I added this to my art nest, you know. Maybe we'll use the hashtag art nest on Instagram and then tag me with the at symbol. Like I said, it's, in the, it's below the show notes. So let's show each other our art nests. And on to the next part of the video. Sorry I babbled for so long on this beginning part. I just, I still feel very brain fogged and kind of lost in space these days. But I am starting to feel better. Thank you all so much for the well wishes. And I will talk to you later. Hope you enjoy the rest of the video. So I haven't been feeling well for a while and I've lately, I, I just don't know what it is, but I um, have been craving to be more in my living space than up in the studio. I think I feel more alone when I'm up in the studio when I'm not feeling good. I have brought this stuff down into my dining room and um, do, attempting to do a little bit of really loose mixed media work. Yesterday I did a painting the same thing, a mixed media painting of our pond, just from memory, but it came out a lot tighter than I had wished it would have. I also did this painting the other day with um, colored pencil, Tombow markers, and some Neocolor crayons, and that's what I used on this too. And then I did this one out uh, out in the dooryard of the path going up to the garden. And this one I stayed really loose on. I just feel like it's really muddy. I do live in Vermont and it is mud season, so I guess, you know, that's what I was looking at was mud. But uh, yeah, that's the garden path. And now this one, I am going to attempt to stay much looser than any of those. And it's, nice using these uh sorry i'm hand holding the camera it's nice using these tools because of the scratchy marks that you get you know when i'm painting i find that i just overdo it I, when i'm trying to get a loose painting i because you can get such smooth strokes and such nice blending with the paint i i tend to go too far and i can't get it loose enough with the markers and the colored pencils and all these other tools it's you know it's a lot easier to stay looser and scribbly sketchy so that's where I'm at and I'm not sure how much of it I'm going to video but I will check in and show the progress as I go let's see what happens
These Faber-Castell pens are really old and they're wearing out. I, and I prefer the Tombow, so I'm slowly replenishing my supply with the dual tip Tombows. So I'm at the point where I feel like I want to go further, but I know I need to stop because I'm already getting fiddly with it. And it was a few minutes ago at a looser state that um, might have been better. I, I might have actually taken it further than I should have, but still it's an improvement on what I've done. I showed you that I've done over the last couple of days. So it's definitely looser and I like the energy to it. I might lighten the sky a little more. I feel like it's a little dark and competitive with the rest of the painting so I may put some more um, gesso or something on it to lighten that. And then pick up all these markers and hubby came in and he's eating lunch, trying to eat lunch so I'm gonna clean this mess up and I'll take a picture of it when it's done if I lighten the sky. Okay, so that's that for today. I had mentioned in a prior video that I would show you all my art nest that I create in when I'm not feeling so great. And I am in the art nest tonight, so I thought I'd do a short video. It's a little tray that you use like a breakfast tray with legs. And I'm in the recliner with my legs up. I put the legs down to lock it in. And I've got my Tombow markers. I've got my sketchbook. I've got all my markers sorted by colors in these, I mean colored pencils, sorted by colors in these reinforced bags. And these, um, actually I will post links to these items in the video description. These are my Neo, Neo Color 2s. And I put all of this in a big bag. So it's handy and I can work right out of the bag. And tonight I was sitting here. Oops. These are my Karen Dosh Luminous pens. I recently did a art haul video on. These are nice. These stack. So you can just stack them all up when you're done and put them aside. And my husband was sitting over there with the dogs on his lap. And I drew him. So that's my art nest. Sometimes I bring gouache down. I have Posca pens in here. I have the Ecoline pens, the water brush pens. I used some of those on this as an underlayer. I don't think I can open this one-handed. There we go. So you can have a lot of different materials. Store them in these little bags. All of, Actually, a lot of this stuff was in the um, video that I recently did on um, an art haul. So I'll link that video on the end card and in the show notes below. But it's really handy. And if I... if 
I'll try to link to this bag. If I can't link to this bag, the specific bag, if they don't still make it, you could use a diaper bag. You could just grab a diaper bag and use that, but it's really handy. It has all kinds of pockets on the outside. I've had this for quite a while and it's really sturdy. So there's my art nest. Really, really nice place to kick back and relax with my hubby in the evening when he watches TV and and create when I'm not quite up to being in the studio. So there you go. Create an art nest for yourself and tell me about it in the comments. Better yet, post a photo of it on Instagram and tag me so I can see your art nest. Another thing I forgot to show that I have in my art bag is this little uh, kit case. It's actually, it comes as an empty case. And I really love this. It's got the pocket outside. I have my art graph pencils in there, some black pens that I got. And I think, I'm not sure, this one came from Jerry's Art of Rama, my eraser. And then inside there's a pocket with all kinds of drawing things, tools. This has everything from erasers to charcoal pencils to gel pens, Signo gel pens, water-soluble graphite, Stabilos. And on this side, I have my water brush pens. And if I'm going out somewhere to paint, I put my little gouache palette or watercolor palette in here. There are erasers, clips, extra clips. Some white gouache, sponges, a pencil erase, a pencil eraser, pencil sharpener. Love this little case. Love, love, love it. Can fit all kinds of stuff in there. The pen. Oh no, this is actually another mechanical pencil. Some of these kind of brushes, travel brushes, all kinds of stuff. It's right in here, zips up, and I can just pop it right into my little art bag here, and I'm all set, all set to go. Got the nice strong handles. Yep, really nice to set yourself up an art nest.